Meine Referenten, okay. Darf ich? Gut. Hello and welcome. My name is Thorsten Knoll and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to present the work of the last three months, which is altogether a bachelor thesis with the title Design and Development of a FPGA-based Vector Graphics Unit. There are two words in it which need some kind of more explanation. FPGA means Field Programmable Gate Array and has its own chapter in this presentation. Also the Vector Graphics Unit, which will, together with the FPGA, explain a little later. What lies before us is we're looking into the goals of the complete thesis. We're going through the topics of the goals, nearly in that order, and come to a conclusion at the end. The goals of the thesis are design and development of a vector graphics unit, also design and development of a rasterizer, a graphics demo, which is what you can see here in the corner, and a little evaluation of the tool chain I'm using, which is Vivado HLS. What are field programmable gate arrays? This is a schematic look inside an FPGA with its main components. This is like the chip die of the FPGA, and there are lots of little units inside. One of the main units are logic cells because they are the main units. On the next chart, we will zoom into such a logic cell and look a deeper, little deeper into that one. We have wires in between these logic cells and the other units. They can connect all the units, all the parts together with the configuration we do via programming the FPGA. Around the die of the FPGA, the chip, are input and output blocks for commu communicating with the outside world around the FPGA. And there is block memory, also called block RAM, which doesn't have to be one big block in the middle. That can also be smaller parts. And that one is good for the logic cells and all the little units to have a little memory beside them to, to store and grab data very fast. Last but not least, we have clock generations because FPGAs are clock driven. If you put a small area together, it doesn't have to be small, together via the wires and the cells together with a clock generator, you have a clock domain because they're all run by the same clock. So there could be a clock domain here, there could be a clock domain here, there could be even more. These logic cells I've shown here are not just only a few on the FPGAs. On actual FPGAs, we have millions of them. This is the promised look inside a logic cell. It's also schematic, and that doesn't apply to all the logic cells in all FPGAs, but it's a good ground-laying schematic we can look on. We have a lookup table. Think about a lookup uh, of a lookup table as you have logic functions like AND, OR, XOR, all the gates you know, but you can freely configure it by programming it. So you can fill this table, this lookup table, and with the data inputs, you define which entry in the table gets to the output. So every logic function you want it to be can be in the lookup table. There is also a flip-flop which can store a little data, just mainly one bit. It can be used to synchronize the whole thing to the clock. And there's a multiplexer where you can decide if the lookup table goes directly to the output or the flip-flop goes to the output. But the main thing is still the lookup table. So the lookup table is programmable. All that stuff is programmable, including the wires and the connections in between. That means an FPGA can, by programming it, nearly be everything you want it to be. An FPGA can be an accelerator for video streams. It can be, you can build your own CPU on it. You can build many electronical things inside an FPGA via, via programming them. And that is, to put it with Hubert Farnsworth's words, that is the crazy professor from Futurama, 
I can wire anything directly into anything. That is if FPGA programming. And in my case, it's a vector graphics unit and a rasterizer. The chip I'm using is the SYNC 7010. It's a Xilinx chip, and it also has, that's why it's called hybrid FPGA, it also has two ARM CPU cores on it, directly inside the chip. That becomes handy because we can run Linux on it, and there is own distribution from Xilinx, uh, which is exactly made for these chips to uh, run the Linux on it. That is very handy for controlling tasks, maybe. The chip is on a Digilen Cybo board, Cybo Sync board, development board. And the main features why I took this board is it has enough I.O. pins, mainly I need output pins out of the board for uh, connections to the displays, as you see here, uh, VGA output. And as I mentioned, the Linux system running on it, we need a USB UART connection for getting onto the Linux system. We could also use network, but I choose this one. Programming of the FPGAs. Mainly, FPGAs get programmed with hardware description language. There are two main languages, uh, VHDL and Verilog. But my, my work for this thesis is based on a high-level synthesis, which enables the programming from higher-level languages like C, C++, or System C. Uh, in my case, it's C. And the whole tool chain, I stay in in the manufacturer's tool chain from Xilinx, which is namely Vivado HLS, Vivado Design Suite, and the Peta Linux, all in the versions 2016.1. The host system for this tool chain is just the standard Ubuntu long-term <coughs> long support. Vivado HLS gives another abstraction layer above programming hardware definition language, which is a standard. In hardware definition language, you mainly think about what the electronic parts should be inside of the FPGA. And high-level synthesis, like Vivado HLS, tries to give you an other abstraction layer above. And this abstraction layer tries to separate things in software development and hardware development. The idea is develop your C code like you would do for normal CPU-based systems like a software development, we all know, and add some extra stuff. They call it directives at Xilinx. Add that extra stuff onto your C code to define the hardware behavior of that C code. And this abstraction is one of the things I wanted to know if Vivado HLS works very well with two implementation scenarios that are slightly different, going into different directions. and. I found out that, I'll wait for the conclusion. <laughs> so far about FPGAs. The vector graphics unit. Let's talk about what is in vector display before we get to the vector graphics unit. That is in vector display. This photo I took on the Gamescom in Cologne this year. It's a Vectrex console from 1983. And this is a vector display. Um, what a vector display defines, we will get to that in the next chart. Inside that, there is a cathode ray beam, a cathode ray tube that was invented by Ferdinand Brown, 1897, which is quite long ago. And this whole thing is a glass tube with a vacuum in it. On the left side, this uh, cathode and this anode are for giving us an electron beam, which is a dotted line that goes in this direction till it hits the screen. These deflection plates are quite interesting for us because they give us some interesting features. Um, they are in x-axis and in y-axis and can deflect the beam to a position on the screen. The voltage you can apply to the x and the y deflection plates are linear to the deflection of the beam and therefore linear to where the beam hits the screen. On the inside of the, fluoresc uh, of the, inside of the tube, 
there is here some fluorescent ma material. And if the beam hits a point here, you can see a glowing of that fluorescent material from the front of the screen. So resume, we have a X and a Y voltage. And if they are fixed, we will see one point glowing. What happens if we change these voltages? We have one set of X and Y voltages here, we call the point one. And we have another set of X and Y voltages we call point two. And we change these voltages from voltage set one to voltage set two. The beam goes from point one to point two by itself and therefore draws a line. It leaves a glowing trail on the screen. So we get the vectors between these points for free. The vector display does it itself for us. We don't have to care about it. We only need the points. And there we're at the vector graphics unit. What the vector graphics unit should do is build a little 3D scene in memory and data structures. They shall be animated and they shall be a complete 3D scene with little animated things and moving stuff. And that is the output. But at the beginning, we need data structures to hold these objects. And as we defined, we only need the points at the moment. We do a data structure with the points in it, like this cube. Um, the dotted lines are the lines that are behind the cube and therefore not seen. It would be best if we don't see them on the display as well. After we defined the structures for the cube or other objects, we can do transformations on that. This is basic ground rules of computer graphics. These are some matrices. Um, you can apply them to a vector by multiplying them with a vector. And what you get is another vector which is transformed by maybe translation, scaling, rotating. I left out the Y and the set rotation because they follow the same scheme. And you can look, up, look them up in every computer graphic book. They map directly to C functions I programmed for the vector graphics unit. So this C functions take the cube maybe as a data set calculated by multiplying the matrices, give out another structure with new points, and there we have transformations. Altogether, that is a pipeline. Initializing cube, transformation cube, back phase culling, that is the point where we don't want to see the lines behind the object. I will not go into deeper how that works now. It's a standard technique. And it's based on the surfaces of the, of the, of the cube. And afterwards, we have to do a projection, which is also some mattress uh, uh, multiplication, also standards from computer graphics, put into a function. And we loop that over 10 objects. Object 1 goes in, goes through. Object 2 goes in, goes through, till object 10. And after that, we start again with object 1. That is the whole clue about the vector graphics unit. Summarize that. We have a pipeline, which is a loop. We're inside that pipeline. We have sub-functions in C programmed, also the loop in C. All, all is programmed in C. And they do the calculations. The animations are done via parameters who get they get into the into the functions, uh, the parameters out of the, the, which we used for the transformations. Uh, I defined the output values are eight bit width, which goes to I/O pin, 